Hello there, wonderful people of God, people who are conscious of the fact that everyone, even the strong, need a support system. Yes, but that support system needs to be chosen wisely. Yes, that's why Proverbs 13 verse 20 makes it clear that we should choose our friends carefully because bad friends will destroy us while good companions will bring out the best in us. Hallelujah. Warm welcome to your Gospel Encouragement Program, Meaningful Few Minutes with Mommy Reads, where we use biblical tidbits to encourage ourselves and miss daily discouragement. Hearty thanks to everyone who is making an effort to like, to comment, to share, and to subscribe. We pray that as you continue to do so, may God continue to give you testimonies in Jesus' name. If you are yet to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Mommy Reads Biblical TV, please make an effort to subscribe and to share as the Lord leads you. May God richly bless you as you do so. My brother, my sister, if Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, quit living a life of sin. Give your life to Christ now that you still have the opportunity to do so. And if you once gave your life to Christ but took it back for reasons beyond your control, now is the right time to give back that life to Christ before it becomes too late. If Christ is actually Lord and Savior of your life, live a life that will attract others to Christ and not repel them from Christ. We pray for ways and directions to keep getting the gospel across so that that brother and that sister can come to the saving knowledge of Christ like yourself and myself. May God continue to equip and empower us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. By the special grace of God, we've been able to share several topics from Slots 1 to Slots 342. The last being the fact that we should stick to our original calling. We should not go because others are going. We should wait until the divine timing is right and until God expressly instructs us before we can go ahead to do the things that he has called us to do. May God help us to practice what we preach in Jesus' name. Today in Slots 343, mindful of the fact that we are ending the month of February and getting set to start the month of March, we have a topic, Grace, to find the right support system. Yes, our main passage is Luke chapter 6 from verse 12 to 17 with a key verse being verse 13 in which we are told that Jesus chose his 12 disciples. This is Jesus, our role model. This is Jesus, our master. You realize that even he himself needed a support system. He chose 12 people to work with him. And even amongst the 12, he had three which were who were really, really close to him. Three whom we can call his inner caucus, Peter, James, and John. And then in addition to these 12, of course, he had many other disciples. But these 12 were his closest allies. They were his closest support system. A support system is that person who can help you more morally, spiritually, financially, physically, and otherwise. And in order for us to get the right support system, beloved in the Lord, there are things that we must take into consideration. First and foremost, we must ask. Sometimes we just think that other people will see our need and understand the things that we are going through. Matthew 7, 7 says that we should ask. That is why even Jesus, before choosing his 12 in verse 13, in the whole of verse 12, he realized that he spent the whole night on the mountain praying to make sure that he does not make a mistake as far as the choice of his support system was concerned. You realize that we also need to be humble. Some of us are too full of ourselves. We are too proud. We don't want to, you know, go down and ask for the people who are able to help us. We think that, you know, because of our status quo, because of our this and our that, we are too big to humble ourselves to ask for those who can effectively help us. Another thing that we need to consider in addition to being humble, we need to be discerning. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says that appearances are deceptive. So we should not be the kind of people who are only moved by physical appearances. We should be discerning enough. We should do what Jesus did. We should pass the people whom we want to ask for help through the scan of prayer so that we will be able to know the people we should associate with and the people we should dissociate from. In addition to that, we need to be patient. Some of our Support system. Of course, they are not angels. They are human beings with their own difficulties, with their own challenges, and with their own hiccups. And so if we focus only on their weaknesses, if we are not patient with them, if we don't show self-control as far as our destiny help us, our support system is concerned, we might just miss the mark. If we focus too much on their weaknesses, we might be blinded to the positive side and to the things that the Lord wants to use them to do in our lives. Hence the need for us to be patient with one another. We also need to be people who don't 
don't assume. Most times we think that because we are close to this person, oh, this person goes to the same church with me, this person is a family member, this pe person is a classmate, is a colleague, has been a friend for a long time. That is definitely the support system. Sometimes that person could be the support system, but sometimes God might just be willing and able and ready to use total strangers to help you scale through that difficulty and so we should not assume that because of longevity we should not assume that because of blood ties we should not assume that because of this and other and that other human parameter that person whom we have before us is definitely our support system or is definitely our destiny helper sometimes the members of our household might just constitute the leaders of the camps of the enemy it is not foreigners or strangers who betray joseph it is joseph's blood brothers who betray him it is not a foreigner who kills abel it is his blood brother cain who kills him and so we should be worried we should be careful how we choose our support system and you realize that our support systems can come in a way that we least expect some of us the members of our support system will come from family Look at the example in Exodus chapter 7 from verse 1 to 2. Moses is afraid. He has given all the excuses that he has given. But it is actually because he is afraid and doesn't want to go on this mission. But God sends him a support system. Somebody whom he can look up to in the person of Aaron. God gives him a coping mechanism. The person of Aaron has been there for him. It's not just his brother. But it's his elder brother who is also knowledgeable about the things of God. And so despite the fact that Moses is adamant, he's hesitant and he's, you know, afraid to go and do the things that the Lord wants him to go and do. The Lord gives him the right support system. That big brother whom he can look up to. That person whom he can confide in. That person whom he can interact with. And that's the same thing that the Lord is doing for some of us today. The support system that he's sending to us is that family member. It can be like Ruth that he sent to Naomi. Naomi was Ruth's daughter-in-law. And so we should be careful how we treat our family members because our support system might even come from a place or a position that we least expect even in the family you look at the, the likes of jethro and moses in exodus chapter 18 from verse 1 downwards you realize that this is a father-in-law who is traveling all the way to come and give moses advice that anointed cannot teach him and it constitutes relevant advice that is very helpful to moses you look at even among spouses aquila and priscilla this is a couple and they are doing their utmost to get the gospel across to to work for the furtherance of the kingdom of god and so that is the reason why we need to go to god in the place of prayer to be able to know the people whom he has destined to be our support system because if we miss it if we get it wrong, we will just miss the assignment that the Lord has committed into our hands. Hence the need for us not to be sentimental, not to be emotional, and not to speak English as far as the choice of our support system is concerned. Yes, because our support system constitutes the people who know us detailing who see our weaknesses who see our secrets it is important for us to know that our support system can also come from the church yes you look at the example of paul and timothy first timothy 1 verse 18 you realize that apostle paul is already eager to work with timothy based on what he has heard concerning timothy his grandmother and his mother have so raised him up in a way that everybody is talking about him and apostle paul decides to work with this young man but this young man is afraid this young man you know he is a youth and he has all the things that every youth has he is not bold he's not confident he's not this and he's not that but because his support system is the person of Apostle Paul. Timothy becomes bold. Timothy becomes courageous. Timothy is the one telling us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of boldness and a sound mind. Apostle Paul is encouraging him that he should not allow anyone to despise his youth. He should not allow anyone to trample upon him. He should not allow anyone to water down the gift of prophecy that he has received after the laying on of hands. And so what this is teaching us is the fact that even in the church, we can find that brethren. We can find that sister. We can find that brother who will be the right support system to see us through that difficulty that we are going through. Maybe we are going through a marital difficulty. We are going through a financial difficulty. We are going through a spiritual difficulty, an emotional difficulty. And that person has walked through that same road. That person has experience. And that person has been mandated to be of help to you 
in that particular difficulty. That person must not necessarily come from the same country like us. That person must not necessarily, you know, look like the physical appearance that we expect. But that person, as long as that's the person whom God has destined for us in the household of the brethren, we need to be people who are ready, who are willing, who are receptive to the wise counsel that can come from the poles that God has placed on our ways so that we will not miss it as Timothy's, but we will achieve the objectives that God has committed into our hands. Another thing that we have to consider is the fact that hey, our support system can come from our friends. Oh yes, look at the example of Jonathan and David. First Samuel 18 from verse 1 downwards. You realize that this friendship is not based on materialistic interest. It's not based on what I stand to gain and what I stand to lose. These people are not friends from anywhere. They are people who are normally supposed to be enemies because as a matter of fact, they are rivals. Jonathan is the rightful heir to the throne, but David is the anointed heir to the throne. And so Jonathan has every right to fight David and David has every right to despise Jonathan, but their friendship is made in heaven. These are two friends who become brothers in a sense. And you realize that they constitute each other's support system. In our world today, you realize that there are many things that are going wrong as far as friendship is concerned because the basis of our friendship is not godly. That's why you can hear that a friend has conveniently poisoned another friend. You can hear that a friend, in quotes, has conveniently, you know, destroyed and brought down the other friend without even thinking twice. Because the, the, the parameters surrounding our friendships are what we stand to gain in the here and now. David and Jonathan don't calculate. They don't turn on the calculator before they start their friendship. They start their friendship in circumstances that are not even favorable. But because it is from their heart, you realize that Jonathan is a support system to David. And David is also a support system to Jonathan. That's why even after Jonathan dies, David is eager. He's in a haste to look for Mephibosheth to repay the kindness that Jonathan showed him while he was alive. How many of us as friends today can, can actually be a good support system even to our friends while they are, are alive? Talk less of when they are dead. Can we be, be compassionate, compassionate enough to the, the, the children, to the siblings, to the parents, to the relatives that they have left behind? Even our master Jesus, he understands this principle. That is why on the cross, he is telling his mother, mother, behold your son. And he's talking about John. John the beloved, the youngest disciple whom Jesus loved most. And he's saying, John, behold your mother. And the Bible says from that day, Mary moved in to live with John. Jesus knew that as he was living this earth, his mother needed somebody who would constitute her support system. It is not because he did not have, you know, human siblings, but he understood that by virtue of what he had invested into John the beloved, it would be easy for John the beloved to repay that kindness even after his departure. And so we should understand that the, the people whom we invest in as friends. It, it, it takes the grace of God for them to repay that kindness in one way or the other. Our friends could constitute our support system, but that is not because of what we do or don't do, but that is because the Lord himself has ordained it to be so. It doesn't mean that as friends we will not have misunderstandings, we will not have difficulties, we will not have discrepancies, but even in the discrepancies, if the Lord is the one who orchestrated that friendship, those friends will constitute, you know, the basis of our support system, even when they see us fall, when they see us down, when they know our weaknesses, our difficulties, they will not use it against us. Rather, they will use it to build us and make us a better version of ourselves. You realize that our support system can come from complete strangers. People whom we don't know. People whom we have hardly met. People whom we are not familiar with. Look at the example of the man at the beautiful gate in Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 downwards. You know, this man is at his office. He's at his duty post. The Bible says that he was always led there because he's lame, he's crippled from birth. He's always begging people to take him there where he can beg for arms. On this fateful day, he sees two strangers, Peter and John. He does not bother about their physical appearance. He goes ahead to ask them for arms. This man is, is, is willing enough to ask even from strangers. Sometimes when we are people who are sensitive in the spirit, the people who are around us as strangers might just be the ones whom God has destined to take us to the next level. And that's why Peter and John answer him. They say, save and go, we don't have. But what we have, we'll give to you. 
after having focused their gaze, fixed their gaze on the man, they realize that they have the man's attention. And so it is possible for them to communicate with the man. Some of us, how do we treat strangers? The way we, we are mean, we are wicked, we are, you know, unpleasant, unkind to strangers. It makes it difficult for that stranger to be of help to us. Even if they have that piece of information, they have that piece of advice, they have that financial ability to help us. By virtue of the way we have treated them, it becomes difficult for them to help us. When we find ourselves in public places, in public offices, where we take, we board taxis, we board, you know, buses, trains, and all other means of public transport, the people whom we meet are not necessarily people whom we know. Those are total strangers. And God forbid, but should something happen to us, those are the people who will be the first to help us. And so they will constitute our support system, whether or not we know them from Adam. Hence, the need for us to be kind to the people we meet. Some of us, we bought taxis and we are so unpleasant. We are so rude. We bought trains. We bought buses. We make as if we are the assistant Holy Spirit. And then imagine that something happens to you. Do we think that those people will be eager enough to as much as lift a finger to help us? Our support system, like we have said, can be strangers. That is why we need to be kind in the way we treat even the people whom we don't know. We need to be discerning to know how to react and interact with the people around us so that we don't end up, you know, helping the people who are on the devil's assignment and running away from the people who are on a divine assignment. Yes, of course, some of our support systems can come from the people who are our superiors, people who are higher than us as far as hierarchy is concerned. You look at the story in Judges chapter 4 where they are to telling us the story of the judge called Deborah. You realize that this woman, though she's a woman, the captain of the army is dependent on her. He's telling her that I will only go for battle if you come along with me. It is not because Deborah is going to fight the battle. It is not because he does not, you know, have the skills to fight as a, a trained soldier, as the captain. But it is because he knows that this support system is the person who hears from God, is the person who is living right with God. And so if this person is amongst the battle team, they are sure to get the victory. He has a coping mechanism. He, holds, he has a coping strategy that is able to make him more confident in the battle. Deborah does not even go for battle. As a matter of fact, she just follows them just because she wants that other person to feel okay, to feel confident in their skin. That person who is your boss, who might not be, you know, as intellectually savvy as yourself, as long as that person is your boss, that person might just constitute your support system. How do we treat them? Do we minimize them? Do we treat them as if, you know, because we are more educated, we are more literate, we are more learned than them, we now know more than them. As long as they are our bosses, beloved in the Lord, they might constitute a part of our financial support system, a part of the support system that God has destined for us. You look at even the example of the fact that some of our support system could be people who are younger than us who can be our staff members hence the need for us even as bosses to treat the people who we have as subordinates right the example of captain Neyman, second kings chapter 5 from verse 1 downwards he is helped by a slave girl whose name is not even mentioned you realize that if this man and his wife had maltreated this woman they would have missed the destination that would have led them to the, the miracle that they had been waiting for a long time. This girl had the key to the place, to the door that, you know, Captain Neyman had, had had no idea of after having knocked on several doors fruitlessly. This girl had the key to the right door. And so if they had maltreated her, of course, they would have missed it big time. And that is how it should be even in our community today. That gate man, that house help, that person who is your staff, your member of staff, how do you treat them? Even as pastors, church leaders, how do you treat that brethren? How do you treat that brother and that sister who does not look like anything to write home about? Do you suppress them? Do you subdue them? Do we oppress them because we think that we're in position of hierarchy? Respect is reciprocal. In as much as our subordinates are supposed to respect us because we could constitute part of their destiny helpers, part of their support system, we too, the bosses, are supposed to reciprocate the respect to our subordinates because they too can constitute part of our support system. And so, beloved in the Lord, we should remember that instead of assuming, instead of becoming proud, instead of becoming conceited and full of ourselves, we should be able to 
prayerfully ask God to show us who our support system is, to work with them despite their weaknesses so that we will get the thing that the Lord has destined for us. Yes, because Proverbs 27, 17 makes it clear that iron sharpens iron. We need the other people in the support system to get to the place that the Lord has destined for us. And that explains why if Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Give me the power to live right and to hate sin. Behold, you'll be getting it right before it becomes too late. Remember that the Bible is the road, Jesus the code, sin the obstacle, and heaven the destination. Shalom, good people of God.